All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Richard Forrest, who is in Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Richard. Thank you very much, John. Uh, yeah. Nice to see you today. And Richard is the Managing Director of the FMG Group. And uh, today what we really wanted to talk about is ethics and sales and, and why ethics and honesty matters. And let's face it, when most people, um, particularly outside of sales, shall we say, when most people think of sales, they don't necessarily think of ethics and honesty. That's not the first thing that comes to their minds, right? They always think, oh, you know, you've got to be a bit wary of salespeople because they're a bit slippery. So uh, um, let's talk, Richard. Why do you think ethics and honesty is so important and how do you better or project that as a salesperson. Yeah, I think I think it's so important to, to everything we do. And and as you say, sales tends to get a bit of a bad reputation for that. And I think it's because some people do have underhanded practices. But for me, the reason for honesty, other than it being a, a core value, is that it's a long term approach to whatever you do. If you're dishonest in a sales presentation, inevitably nothing it, no sale goes hundred percent smoothly sure. from beginning sure. to end. Something's going to come undone. And if you haven't got in the bank some honesty and credibility to back you up, it's very hard to overcome those and you end up with a very unhappy customer. So right from the outset, I think demonstrating honesty and integrity um, means you can build a great client relationship and it builds your brand uh, and your own personal image. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't yeah. agree, I couldn't agree more because, as you say, there are things that are going to come up during a sales process, and building building that that trust factor is, is huge. But um, so, how do you go about that? Because, as I said again, I mean, people aren't just going to trust you just because you show up, right? You're going to have to build yeah. that and prove that. So, how do you go about that as a salesperson? Well, I think I think initially it's making sure you don't overpromise. It's doing the right thing by the person and showing them respect. So whether you're talking to them or their PA, uh, show them honesty and dignity. Um, when you're actually selling, be honest with what you're doing and don't overpromise, don't oversell. Somebody's looking for for a product or solution that you can uh, provide. They are looking for your solution. But if what they're looking for is outside the remit of what you can provide, the best thing you can do is tell them that. Right. Because if they still decide to, to choose right. you, and they may well do, at least they do that with their eyes open. Um, so I think the key thing is make sure when you're presenting your product, you do so honestly, clearly, no overpromising. Yeah, so that's a, and that's a difficult thing sometimes because let's face it, um, most salespeople are, you know, optimists by nature. I mean, you have to have a certain kind of crazy optimism to be in sales, right? Because you suffer from so much rejection. So sometimes there's the temptation to like try and fit the square peg into the round hole, and it's not necessarily being dishonest. It's just that you're so enthusiastic and trying desperately to make this fit for the customer, even though when it's patently it's not going to so how do you how do you encourage a salesperson to overcome that to take that step back and say okay I'm, is what i'm doing now really the right thing mm. I, and i think that's exactly right it's it comes down to doing the right thing and the right thing is not just doing the right thing for my bonus check at the end of the month it's about doing the right thing by the customer and it's doing the right thing by the company and it's also doing the right thing by the the operations team who are probably going to have to deliver on what you've sold <laughs> And if you get all of those things wrong, you're going to get a wealth of pain from all of those different people. <laughs> so actually, in some ways, you learn fairly quickly. You can't overstep too much. But I really think that the approach that, that I, I really uh, focus on when I'm selling and when I'm talking to people about selling is one of asking really good questions of the customer to find out exactly what you need. You don't need to overcomplicate things, but you do need to find out exactly what they're looking for. And if you can do that, you can say to them, this is what we can provide and this is what we can't provide. Sometimes they'll choose a competitor over you. But many times, if, they, if that's been oversold, they'll come back to you at the end of it and say, you know what, we bought the wrong one. We want to 
to talk to you again. So that sort of long term approach makes a big difference. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. I mean, the idea um, of you know qualifying properly, asking the proper questions, because I mean, let's face it. Sometimes, again, I said enthusiasm or optimism or something takes over, and salespeople tend to skid past the qualifying phase a little bit too quickly, and that obviously leads to problems mm. down the road. So, so when you're working with with salespeople, how do you get them to kind of, you know? slow down cooler jets a moment and 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 really get into the questioning phase and qualify properly so how do you advise them to do yeah, that i think the the sorry say again no i was saying how do you advise them to do that yeah i i always advise them to as you say take it slowly and understand the the client's needs because you've got something which can do a whole range of stuff and only some of that is go- going to be what your client needs. So there's no point in talking to them about things they don't need and therefore qualifying them and taking the time to understand exactly what their, con- their, their pain points and their situation are is really vital. I think one of the best things that a salesperson can do is see their um, clients' problems through their clients' eyes. Mm-hmm. Because when you can do that, you can identify what the, the issues are for them and where your service or product can fit in. So my my counseling always is take your time, build your questions, understand what are the key questions, and then view the problem from the customer's side. Um, because you'll build a really good rapport with them they'll understand that you understand their issue and they'll also open up and they'll be much more likely to trust you because it's not just about finding an issue and selling on that issue. It's about finding exactly where the situation is. Yeah, it's always an interesting, it always fascinates me a bit. It's an interesting phenomenon that sometimes we forget that we're consumers ourselves, that we're buyers ourselves. And and sometimes, in, as you say, in a sales situation, salespeople forget to put themselves in the shoes of the buyer. Yet, you know, they're in the shoes of the buyer all the time themselves personally, whether it's buying consumer goods or whatever themselves. So um, that, that's a really that's a really critical piece is that empathy piece or putting them in their shoes. But it just doesn't seem to come naturally to everybody. Why do you think that is? I think I think too many people are focused on making the sale mm-hmm. on the outcome and not the process. One of the first things I learned in sales is that you don't make a sale by doing a lousy presentation and closing really hard. <laughs> uh, you can make sales that way, but it's rare. Yeah. Um, the way the way to make sales is in the presentation phase, and the presentation phase is not. Um, a verbal monologue of the salesperson present or talking at the prospect. It's about a two-way conversation where the two people are aligned. And you will know this when when you meet somebody and you gel with them, Mm -hmm. you're having a conversation back and forwards and you find things in common. The same is true in sales. The salesperson needs to find what they have in common solution-wise with that prospect as well as building rapport. And when they do that, they go on a journey together. It's not a one-way um, giving of information, it's absolutely two people together, taking that journey, understanding what needs to be done. And so by taking the focus off the result at the end and the close, put it into the presentation and, and having that presentation being a two-way process, not a one-way process. Um, because when you get to the close, likelihood is the, the, the client is going to say, okay, so what are the next steps? You don't actually have to if you put your, your energy in the right area. Uh, so so that that's a, it's an interesting point that you raise right i mean it's about having obviously engaging in that conversation getting that kind of rapport going and and i think part of that is um you know that you have to recognize that especially in b2b sales right you know the, there's a lot riding on behalf of the buyer right it can be it can be a career enhancing or a career limiting decision that they make depending on how the, the how it works out and i think going that empathy and really drilling down in that early conversation uh you know can really make a big difference so how do you also advise your sales people to go beyond like surface level questioning in order to really get down to what's going on with with the buyer with the buying committee with the company all those other factors that may come into play yeah, and you're absolutely right. You're generally selling to one of, of several people who are going to be buying from you. And so, again, that's the reason for building a great relationship, rapport, and, uh, and uh, building a good conversation with that decision maker, because they have to take 
their conversation with you, the salesperson, back to the other members of the team and sell it to them. And so they need to be able to do that effectively. It's very hard to third person sell. But if you believe that the person who sold to you is being honest and has given you a really good solution, it's much, much easier. So I always um, suggest try and get as many of the, the, the buyers, people in the room if you can. But if you can't, make sure that you're talking about the the problems that exist, not just in the, the, the people who are present in that meeting, not just in their areas of the business, but also in the affiliated areas of the business, because that's what they're going to translate back to their colleagues. So if you're talking to the head of finance, but there's an IT component about what you're talking about. If you can talk to that head of finance about what the IT person mm-hmm. is likely to be suffering from, the, the head of finance is going to go back to IT and talk about that, and it's going to resonate. So you're bringing the other buyers in without them having to be necessarily. Yeah, and and that again is building more trust and credibility, right? Because you ha- you have initiated that connection. Yes, that's exactly right. And I, I see salespeople get things wrong right from the word go, uh, not even in the sales presentation. When they're trying to get through to a decision maker to talk to them, they bully their way past the EA or PA or receptionist. And, and they expect that that's going to be acceptable and nobody's going to find out about it. Right. Inevitably, the, sale, the, the decision maker finds out about it and you've lost it before you even get to talk to them. Yeah. And even to your point, I mean, some go, go as far as like, oh, I, I really don't want to get the IT people involved because they could like sabotage my deal. So let's see yeah. how I can keep them out of this. And yeah. so just moving on um, to um, another thing about honesty and ethics and that in selling. Um, so there's so much automation has come in now and there's bots and there's AI, there's AI selling assistance right on LinkedIn, which is just nuts. You know, I saw that the other yeah. day from somebody who a fake LinkedIn profile did. You know, I mean, really, but mm. so as buyers, we're now you know got so much automation. We've got AI coming up. We've got all of those things. Do you think that that really is an opportunity for salespeople to kind of raise themselves above all of that? Because we we're we're kind of confused now. We don't know what's real anymore. So you have got a great opportunity to engage mm-hmm. with me on a, on a human to human level, right? Yes, I absolutely agree with that. I think as salespeople, we've become, it's become easier to get lazy because there is so much automation there. We can rely on that. And a, a new lead pops up. It's a sales qualified lead coming through, uh, you know, from the CRM or something like that. But the reality is a whole heap of people in there who probably have a need for our products and services who aren't popping up mm-hmm. and they're just getting, they're getting emails. And we get the same, everybody gets the same thing. Lots of what they, what people call spam. And they don't respond to it. The conversation cu- absolutely cuts through. It makes it very apparent there's a genuine conversation. It's a person. It's not AI. It's somebody you can believe in and trust. And also, it, it builds a conversation that is personal to that that specific prospect and not an email message that was written to be relevant for a couple of thousand people or a hundred thousand people. So in reality, as a salesperson, you can use that relationship, you can use that honesty, you can use that, you know, genuine outreach as almost as like as a competitive differentiator today, right? Yes, I I agree. I really do agree. I think that um, smart sales teams are going to get back into more human to human contact. I'm not saying they should give up all the uh, electronic media at all. Absolutely. That's, That's got a really great place. But it should be a supplement to the human to human side. Uh, because that's the way that you build trust, really. You can look at websites and people's LinkedIn profiles, but today there's always that nagging doubt that I wonder if this is genuine or not, Right. Um, which you don't have with a phone call or a face-to-face meeting. Oh, excellent. Um, listen, Richard, we're, we're bumping up against the end of the time. So before we go, I wanted to give you a chance to tell people a little bit more about yourself, about your organization, how they can learn more about you. Mm, Thank you very much, John. Yeah, uh, I run a company called Forest Marketing Group or FMG in Australia. We're a a specialist business to business sales prospecting company. And we go out and we source qualified sales leads uh, through conversations on the telephone, business to business. We've got a sister company in the UK uh, called Air Marketing Group. And so if anybody wants to contact either Air Marketing Group, it's air-marketing.co.uk or Forest Marketing Group is fmgroup.com.au. Happy to talk to them. Yeah, that's great. Listen, it's been great talking with you, um, Richard. It's been a fascinating conversation. I really do think that honesty, ethics and relationships are going to come 
and not just back into vogue i don't think they've ever gone away but i think they're going to become more important as buyers get more confused by the amount of information that's been slung at them yes i totally agree john thank you very much all right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.